Hello everyone, nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Simon Frost. Uh, I'm a software architect in OMS uh, Architecture and Technology Group. Uh, I'd like to talk to you today about the uh, forthcoming ARM Confidential Compute Architecture. Uh, what we're going to cover, um, we were br briefed on this that um, we, we, a lot of people will have actually seen the uh, deep dive day we did with Lenaro on uh, confidential computer architecture earlier in the year. Um, but we weren't sure if that covers everyone um, and it would hopefully help a little bit. So I'm gonna get a little bit over the architecture um, of the difference what is on the processor. Talk a little bit about software impacts, uh, about how a relying party will develop trust in the CCA, and then a little bit more about where we are with status. Um, I'm happy to take questions as we go, but on, I'll just, uh, generally it's broken into these sections, I'll stop at the end of the sections to see if there's off this, or if not, we'll just have a section at the end. Um, I doubt the present, the slides will take up the full uh, time. So if we look at the architecture. Now, um, ARM architectures uh, up till now uh, have included uh, a two isolated worlds, um, a secure world and normal world. And the status of that is being that uh, the normal world was fully isolated from um, from secure worlds. So a normal world could not attack, could could not uh, access anything in secure world. Whereas secure world uh, is a was a um, though an isolated uh, in space could actually talk to pretty much anything. So it could talk to normal world and it could uh, access into EL three as well. What is the the RME extension? Uh, adds is it extends this to four worlds and these are fully isolated um, uh, or can be fully isolated so that uh, the difference is so secure world loses access to uh, to EL3 which is the uh, root world or monitor world um, and a new world gets added the the realm space which is designed specifically for confidential compute and so normal world is remains the, uh, the the poor man and cannot cannot access any of the other world's areas but distinctly different from the the prior architecture is that secure world cannot access realm world uh, the one world can access everything as you would expect um, uh, potentially and but uh, realm world um, can access normal world for the, for the purpose of, uh, of, of data space. And within realm world, uh, it is effectively a place where confidential VMs can run. Uh, so the management scope remains within normal world. So your normal uh, management stack of or interaction with a uh, VMM or similar uh, would remain, but the uh, actual executions of the, of the guest in realms are um, are fully isolated. And what the isolation is achieved by is is, is actually it is actually um, physical address isolation. So um, at the point of um, physical address uh, access, uh, a new internal architectural structure called the granule protection table is is uh, is checked to check that the access uh, is is correct and appropriate for the the realm where execution is is currently is currently taking place now the other advantage of that which actually is going to give a boost to secure world um i don't know if anyone is familiar with the previous uh, access of, of of having to program things secure world. secure world was previously a very fixed uh place where uh, only at really at boot time the memory was was carved out and and remained uh, much in that way uh, the advantage of one of the other advantages of rme is that uh, memory can move dynamically between physical address sites by programming the granular protection table um, and granular protection table programming only takes place from within the monitor uh, so this is a the restriction on consistency on to try and make that uh, more, more secure. Uh, so uh, you have have world isolation, which is achieves your 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 core your core um, confidential isolation. Um, but within realm world, it, it acts you know very much like a, a regular virtualization solution. So you have stage two isolation uh, between uh, the individual VMs uh, from that point of view. 
so um, the various components is so we have the that's the hardware um, aspect of this the architectural aspect of this actually achieving the ability to run the VMs is backed up by uh, various components the hypervisor retains its its usual role of um, scheduling um, and, and, and management and management of resources and as I say the sort of your your VMM uh, still lives in in that space so the implication of that is that um, there is no guarantee of um, availability uh, so this is more about the the, the threat model we're, we're working with here is one of um, integrity and confidentiality uh, so uh, the, the but, but by, by keeping um, scheduling within the hypervisor it makes the the impact on a system uh, much less the hypervisor will interact uh, with realms and in terms of the management thing by calling a, a set of uh, ABIs called the RMI which talk to a component that runs in realm world EL2 which is the realm management monitor so that will expose services to to control realms and to you know, so do things like be able to create and destroy them um, make memory requests for uh, the, the the relevant memory that's going to exist uh, within the realm world and then um, once those requests are made, the RMM will interact with the monitor to actually do the under the covers uh, programming. So the, deep, the the low level programming is is not exposed um, either to the or the we should say the architectural programming is not exposed either to the hypervisor uh, or the RMM. It is it is in the it is within the monitor world. In addition, the realm world manages all of the state of uh, uh, the RMM manages all of the state of a realm. So this is kept confidential. Um, so that the, the context switching uh, or when context switching occurs, this is this is kept managing within uh, the realm place. Uh, to the guest, um, the RMM exposes the, the realm service interface. And that's essentially used for some memory management purposes, uh, faulting stuff in, uh, and it's also used for the the trust system for attestation. Um, and I'm going to cover that much more later on. There'll be uh, certain um, standard uh, implementation pieces to try and minimise the the impact on guest software. Uh, so things like a BSCI implementation will be there. Oh, sorry. Interface is not going on. Okay, that was actually that was that was very a very rapid because we thought we were coming into um, uh, a, a, that's a, hopefully a very rapid uh, revision over the architecture. Is are there any questions at this point? Nope. Okay, I'll rock forward. Um, so let's talk a bit about. Uh, oh, I have a question. Uh, Andreas says, has it meanwhile been decided where those components will be implemented? Um, TFA or separate? Okay, yes, the, 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 there will be a reference implementation within TFA. I've got a whole status section on that later. Uh, so we can talk about what's, uh, what's, what's going to be built by whom and when. Uh, I will come back to that point. Thank you for the question. Uh, so let's talk about software impact. Um, I will just, I will make two disclaimers or apologies in advance for a start this section. Um, one is that I am uh, not in, I am not an expert in this area. We had hope we might give one of our kernel maintainers um, to be able to give this talk, uh, but unfortunately we're not available. Uh, so I hope I'll be able to answer some of your questions, but I will not guarantee any. Uh, the other one is that I'm not going to be able to talk about any of the interfaces in detail. Uh, I'm going to talk at, 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 an, at, at a summary level. Uh, the main reason for that is because um, a lot of design work is still going underway. It's still underway and I'll again talk about what, our, what the status of that is. So we did not want to go into any detail which we might subsequently change. But let's see if we cover it. Okay, so by comparison with regular VMs. Um, so talking about KVM here uh, by comparison. So the, a, a regular VM um, uh, 
set up control is via, via IOTL to the device. And what you're going to, that's going to ha happen is that you're going to have a, a number of, of, of mem slots per VM, which have a, a VMA each. Um, those are and mapped in to the, the, the relevant uh, virtual address space. And separately to the, you know, the memory setup, there is then a, a vCPU object again within KVM space, uh, which is where the uh, PE state um, comes and goes uh, as the um, as the VM scheduled. The difference with realms is that the the the, the management, if you like, or the addressing, or, or if you like, of the uh, protected realm memory is a single mem slot, and this is because there's no uh, you know the, the, there's no sort of uh, you make a, a request as it were there's no sort of a direct individual management uh or from outside the from outside the realm so there's two uh, address ranges that have to be set up um for the for a realm one is the protected range which is where the uh the realm code the confidential code is going to execute um and then a non-secure range which is just used for um for cons for right essentially just for uh, io uh sharing anything between the realm and the uh, and, and, and normal world and you'll have a single um va um for the for for, for each of these um and that will that will can that's the the, the only space you'll see so essentially you, you create the ranges and you you educate the, the the rmm about them and the rmm will worry about the um the underlying the underlying mapping and so i keep wanting to click buttons on the wrong one and so what happens then the the requests now to the um um kvm Will actually now reflect as change as calls through to the RMM uh, to ABIs and to create uh, a realm. You're going to create correct a, a realm descriptor, so you have a, a context for the um, uh, the actual VM, as it were. Um, create an execution context uh, per VCPU, and this is this this is what the realm uses as its state holder, but this is this remains within realm world. Um, great realm translation tables, populate the, in, in the, the initial memory contents. So this is your, your initial boot code or normally actually just sort of the, the in-guest firmware uh, for this. Um, there will be potential to, to, to fault in memory during realm execution, basically as, uh, as in interaction with the, uh, as the, as the, as the guest grows and, and boots. Um, the memory is, um, uh, that you, you put in the realm, um, you know, it's, it's swap and, and KSM double. So that from so that the manipulation or the memory from outside the realm, if you like, uh, is is prevented. Um, but as as is necessary, um, that uh, as, as you know, if there are requests, they are reflected through to the realm world, and the realm is it's it's fully full. The RMM is fully in charge of the um, uh, the the mapping and the statements in the realm. Um, and uh, any 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 interrupts. I'll come back to interrupts later. Interrupts are are delivered to EL2 uh, as a regular, and then they're reflected through to the through to the realm. And then the RMM is fully in charge of the um, the mapping and the setup and, and isolation of the individual VMs um, and of the the hardware state, the or the emulator virtual um, the hard, hardware state. Um, I'll come back to the question later. Uh, so interrupts, as I say, so if you're thinking about um, physical interrupts like like timers and the like, um, they are uh, delivered to ELT as 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 today, and um, but they do need to be sent through to the guest uh, as relevant and to minimize the guest changes so there's no changes to the uh, the the, the VIC type stuff that you all you, that the guests would expect, but um, when the host determines that the um, uh, the, the the interrupts have uh, need to be delivered, they will actually that will be another RMI call through to the RMM, and then the RMM will um, uh, inject interrupts into the into the virtual gig, and 
anything, any any gig programming in terms of things like mask registers and stuff like that is is uh, maintained um, and is managed within the RMM. So that is isolated from the host uh, and that's protecting the masking controls. What isn't controlled, and this is why it's a software, potential software impact, is that the, um, the host, because it's responsible for sort of fielding the, the interrupts and, and sending them on, um, the life cycles and any config in terms of uh, priority or whatever is, is outside the RMM, so it's outside the TCB. Um, so there is a risk, a potential, if you, you have to consider with your threat model, um, whether it matters if you have interrupts that are um, spurious, out of order, or suppressed, or something like that. Uh, now, this depends on your you know, your deployment model um, and the, the nature of your guest. It may not matter, or if not, this is something that may be uh, maybe needed need work within in the gig. Um, and we will be doing some work on this ourselves, but it's something that uh, to be taken into account when when considered. Other things that may uh, you may need to worry about sort of within the guest um, IO. Uh, is is a, is a sort of clearly clear classic sort of bounce buffering type thing. Be um, built in that again. You'll see some work from us on this stuff. Um, similarly, we are working on um, changes to the, the the guest firmware. Now, some of that is is not really specific to to uh, ARM CCA, but is to the whole. Um, uh, industry-wide CC efforts. There are sort of there are multiple architectures which are having uh, an effect on that, and there is there are work going on with these sort of little individual communities to do this. Um, but we are uh, we are looking at these work that works for these and what it matters to do these. For example, you will not necessarily have a TPM or VTPM available for the guest. Um, the the um, we are not certainly not building providing one within the within the RMM. What it will be are um, ABIs within the RSI, which will give you equivalent functionality. And you can see this emerging in other architectures as well. So this is where there is a uh, perhaps a common industry approach to um, some changes uh, within this space uh, in sort of the you know, early boot sequences as to how they sort of cope. Similarly, how you might need to cope with a uh, secret injection. Uh, for to um, uh, unlock images, uh, uh, guest images, and the like. Uh, so the whole trust system in, in terms of um, firmware measurements, in terms of attestation, is uh, devolved off to specific RSI calls. And if there is um, if there are changes you need there, um, that is, those are are changes that may be needed in the guest. Again, depends on your guest. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things. Uh, if there's a, there's, we will be publishing um, a lot of work on threat models, uh, stuff like that, and uh, security assessment. And these are some of the areas that we we contemplated with that. And I've talked a little bit about sort of the uh, what can do with interrupts and stuff like that. But then is this question of um, how. Uh, you know how how different sort of execution thing uh, things are, you know, the things that are outside the TCP. You know, do these matter to you? Uh, they may or may not. And that's matters. Uh, I think that was it for that section. Yes, I think that was that section. So let me just see. There are a couple of questions that come in. Um, Andreas again. Question is arms is CCN optional on V9 extension? Or has become available with first V9 extensions such as Octane 10 based on the Nearverse? Um, yeah, so this is good. This will this will depend a little bit on our partners uh, as to when they are um, producing um, uh, RME uh, in in different um, areas. Um, I can't really comment on that. I think you'll see it in 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 different sectors at different times uh, as when they'll be available. Um, but you'll see you'll see more on that in in different sectors. Okay, um, trust and attestation. If you look here at this this world diagram, um, we have as, as we were talking about before, we have the the, the realms running here. We have the RMM, uh, the monitor, and the under and the underlying hardware, and then secure world, normal world, things like that. Your TCB, if you are um, 
the client of a realm, not really just the realm, the client of the realm who we, we consider to be the, uh, the person or the, the, the agent uh, who needs to, uh, needs to um, uh, establish trust. And this is normally a trust because the workload that's going inside the realm, if you're bothering to put it in confidential compute, then it's got to be uh, worthwhile. And um, the question is, so what do you have to trust? Okay, you have to trust the hardware, you have to trust the monitor uh, in EL3, and you have to trust the RMM. You may also have to trust the, uh, the realm runtime, uh, the you know the actually the the system supporting your realm uh, depending a little bit on the use case um, and this is addressing sort of you know are you doing this as a um, a, a blind hypervisor type use case where you essentially you're just taking a VM and say please can I run it in a confidential commute environment um, in which case you you as the user you you have probably have that you're probably pretty, have control over the image fully the image and it probably arrives at the hoster um, encrypted and you're in charge of the uh, unwrapping key for that in which case you probably don't need to, you don't need to, to establish trust in that because it's something you've trusted alternatively there are um, more inter some interesting um, confidential compute workloads where actually what you're you're bringing is more of an app type context. Uh, I mean, these are full VMs, but in some cases we've heard of where hosters are providing um, uh, specific execution environments, for example, uh, you know, little, little fully contained WASM sandboxes. And you're the, the, the user, or the app user in this case, uh, the Realm user in this case, will be providing just a, a, an application level workload to that. But then the additional piece of the TCP there is they need to establish um, the identify the the runtime is as that they expect and to underpin that so the the basis of trust uh, you'll need to establish this is attestation so um, a realm uh, itself can request an attestation report at any time um, bar and bar the RSI and there's no mandate over the underlying protocol. So the relationship between the Realm user um, and the code within the Realm, the, if you like, the business logic, uh, which is going to need to establish that trust, is 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 not mandated. Uh, only that, really, just for, for the sake of, of um, full binding context and for freshness, there should be a challenge established. Um, so that uh, the attestation report goes through the RMM and goes right through to the platform. And the anchor, the security, the, the trust anchor, if you like, for the um, attestation report is anchored in, a, uh, in, in what we call the hardware enforced security component, or HES. Um, now, HES is a, an architectural concept. Um, but it's a, a hardware trusted controller. Uh, so it's a separate execution context, which is going to um, store the store and, and process the secret. So this keeps, this gives a, a separate execution and an isolation for your keys. Um, uh, and this is an idea this is, or, or, or an architectural concept that we've been working with for a little while uh, and it's now starting to creep into into other areas and I think this is in reaction to um, a lot of the sort of you know some of the side channel threats that people have had there so this is just gives, adds uh, a little bit of extra separation um, it holds provision secrets for things like signing keys um, and things like measured boot when they execute, they will provide their measurements to the HES, um, which, which could be then set like that used in uh, an attestation report. The RMM will hold the um, the state, the, the, any any relevant measurements for uh, the Realm VM itself uh, for the, for the guests. So the key to that, uh, or the root of that is the initial contents of the realm. Now that's normally um, your um, guest firmware. But you know, that's, the, that's the start point of that. And then as the, the realm executes and, and boots, the, as the and new software comes in, um, measurements are available. Um, and and in, in a 
concept we call the, the runtime extensible measurement reducers. Uh, and these are available via a, a, an ABI uh, to extend, semantically think of them like a, a PCR uh, from that point of view. So this enables the, uh, the actual contents of the realm, the runtime, the workload within the realm to, uh, to measure itself and express itself. And this information is inside the attestation report. Process of producing the attestation report. Um, the request from the the realm code goes up into the RMM, uh, which has can capture its its relevant state. Goes um, up into the in into the through the monitor to the HES um, using a challenge which is based on the realm state. Um, the uh, attestation report, the platform attestation report is produced within the HES. So that covers your firmware measurements, the identification of the hardware, um, well, either explicitly or implicitly, um, and a signature by a, an identifiable platform key. Um, that part of the token goes back to the realm world, um, to the RMM, which adds the, the realm measurement claim. So the, the measurements, the initial content, this goes back to the um, the the, uh, the user or to the realm code and thence to the user so that is then a, a full set of evidence which can be used to uh, assess the platform okay before i get on to the next step i realize i i, I didn't pause last time at the end of software impacts question any any questions at this point uh, it's armed developed in the form of test suite for assembling the trustworthy of the depicted components depending on the, the round possibly as far as system ready. Um, there will be there will be validation code um, and establishing trustworthiness to a certain extent. I'm just coming on to that. Um, let me introduce you to Project Verizon. Once you have an attestation um, blob. Once you have an attestation report, it is effectively a blob. Um, we are in, endorsing, you know, trying to take a standards-based approach wherever possible. So the, the the attestation report, when it comes out, will actually be using the IETF uh, EAT uh, entity attestation token format, uh, which is a, a, a bundle of um, CBOR encoded claims uh, in a in a cozy header, um, and following the the the, the IETF RATS uh, work for that. Um, it would be possible, if you like, to uh, it is potentially possible to to substitute different components for the platform if that if that if that's relevant. Uh, but the the model keeps the same. Um, now we had a lot of people worrying in a similar way to to Andreas is like, okay, well, you know, how, how are we going to um, verify this? Because a an attestation token is pretty useless by itself. You do need to have the you know established confidence in it and understanding whether these measurements are good or not and whether you have all the right pieces of information is actually quite hard to on an individual basis um, and there will not be a central verifier service for all of this because of the there are uh, a large number of partners and lots of different um, business and, and regulatory contexts in for their partners um, in response to that to, to try and give a to lower the bar to solving this problem and um, to make it easier to, to fit to different deployments. Um, Arm's contributing to um, a, an open source project called Verizon, which is a, uh, a, a, a way of getting a project name that involves verification and attestation. And Project Verizon is designed to produce software components that can be used to build uh, an attestation service. Um, and while this will have um, CCA, we'll be, we'll be, the, the ARM will be contributing um, uh, a, a way of verifying CCA within this. But to be, we think this is a, a general problem across the industry, um, that a lot of these, a lot of solutions for this are, are highly custom. So the Verizon is intended to be an industry-wide um, effort, which is, will be pluggable and to address various um, common um, common implementations. So things like um, uh, general EAT um, per se, uh, the processing, um, um, ARM already has that in, in terms of PSA, so you have your I, IoT context on this. Um, it will also embrace day, uh, DICE, so it's embracing TCG efforts on this. Um, and it will be extensible and pluggable for other things. We, you know, the intent is that's useful uh, for that. Um, so 
you know the the general principle of of Verizon um, is that there are um, is a a, a a validation pipeline which is pluggable, so it can it can cope with different uh, attestation formats um, and a uh, uh, the un and underlying queries for the, that are needed to um, check evidence, if you like. So the evidence will maybe have software measurement, a, a firmware measurement, and then there will maybe a data query to establish whether that is a uh, a good known piece of piece of firmware. Um, that will give you the the evidence checking level, and then you can have you can plug in a policy, uh, which we hope will be an OPA engine. Um, which will be able to you could use for um, semantic um, queries with much more sort of uh, use case centric over whether say the relevant pieces of evidence are are, are available that's backed up with a provisioning API um, which essentially connects the verifier to the supply chain and that's actually a really messy area um, uh, we hope that there's a lot of work that team has done with um, uh, some TCG, uh, TCG bodies to get some new sta emerging standards on uh, how you get evidence into a verifier for that to try and get some standards on that. Um, and so there will be an endorsement store that underpins that, which will hopefully make things um, much more consistent uh, for uh, how you get data in that supports that. The idea of those 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 components are, are scalable as they need and will be built over an abstraction, which will allow you to build um, uh, different things and the Verizon project will be able to will be producing a couple of reference implementations that people can take uh, and expand on so that was trust and attestation any any queries this time Andreas did that answer your question uh, I, I think your question I, I'm reading your question as, as being twofold one the stuff I've just been talking about and also that whether there will be um, uh, implementation validation suites um, so so mainly I was wondering about your slide um, that was showing this. I think it was like green tainted area of what it was actually relying on. So really uh, yes. like the uh, um, implementation in silicon or in like Cortex cores or Neoverse cores in the future. Um, because, well, if you already have difficulties with trust down concepts today, then I imagine that as the concept gets more complex, then also the need for actually being able to verify implementations is going yep. to need to grow. Thank you for that clarification. Yes, so I think this is, this should be, the intent is that that should be fully coverable by a, um, via attestation so that you will be able to use attestation to identify everything that's in that green box. So you'll be able to identify the hardware, so the actual um, uh, the architectural implementation uh, of of the of the platform, including CCA. So you can confirm that this is a you know this is a processor that correctly supports a, um, um, CCA. Um, any trusted subsystems that there, um, the state of the uh, of, of the life cycle, make sure that your your keys are exposed. The fact you've got things like HES and measurements of all the pieces of firmware that are in there. Uh, so the key perm of that. So, so you should be the the intent is that that will be uh, fully covered. Okay, then I misunderstood that. I thought that the attestation would actually apply to the part above the green box, like the software that we would be supplying. Oh, I'm sorry, I've just gone gone too far. Um, no, attestation will come. Attestation will con include everything that is in the green box, but it is requested from the pink box in this picture. So your um, your workload. Um, which is the, the confidential bit uh, that, that the, the user will be supplying can decide when it wants to establish trust. And when it wants to establish trust, it would request an attestation report because what it's saying is like, I get it, is this really the platform? Is this really a CCA platform I'm running on? Um, and the platform aspect of that report that, that comes back, uh, which is, can be verified by something like a, a, a Verizon built um uh application report um will uh allow you to verify the the individual aspects of the platform and then there may be realm uh measurements within the realm as well and those would allow you to allow you to identify the workload or the the and the, certainly the runtime for the workload does that answer does your question that, does that 
kind of, yeah. Does that the type of attestation then imply that it will not be possible to migrate VMs that are, are you know running in that realm to a different machine because the attestation would then differ? That's or a completely different, different so, type. Well, yeah. okay. Well, I'll answer that in two ways. <laughs> One is that. Um, the, 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 our initial versions will, will not support migration. Will not support migration. Um, there is a whole bunch of work that's that will go on in, in migration. Secondly, that is a problem that migrating VMs and maintaining attestation is a, a a tough problem, which can be approached in multiple ways, which I'm not sure we've got time for. But uh, one of which is is incumbent on the the host to make sure you only migrate to a compatible machine. The other the other one is into a whole nasty area of how you reattest to a system, um, which we really don't have time for. Um, but yeah, I, it's it's the and mostly because the guest doesn't really necessarily know when you've migrated for that sort of, to be able to reattest. Now you can request request an attestation anytime, so you would potentially be able to detect that has happened, but it's knowing when to do it is that is the problem for that. I think we I'm I just got one more section to talk about, which is status. Uh and then because I've just been given a time warning. Uh so status, there are a bunch of resources available now. This is stuff that will will continue to come out. So there's all of the this is mostly that the, the, you know says like like there's lots of hardware resources out at the moment. Um, there's also initial uh, releases within TFA for the monitor code uh, that will be re re released um, and, and and continue to work on. Uh, the Verizon is active and the various components of Verizon are active and there is a model available uh, that you can execute on uh, for 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 RME. In terms of software impact, um, there is an experimental uh, four-world exper execution environment available in trusted firmware. Uh, the link is there. The RMM code, the RMM specification is not yet available. Uh, that will be published sometime next year, and I can't commit to any more accurate date than that. Uh, there is work going on, uh, as I've alluded to, in, 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 in KBM, and Linux generally, UFI areas, um, and that will be upstreamed. Um, uh, as in well, so we are making, we are trying to make reference implementations uh, available. Um, you know, how those how those go into particular areas is 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 a matter to be seen. Um, uh, but there is look, there is work going on that can be can be built from ARM that can be built on. Um, and once the RMM spec is out, because that will talk a lot more about attestation, then the uh, CCA attestation extension will go into Verizon as well. What's we, what is being worked on at the moment? Uh, this is supplementary to uh, the information that was in the Linaro CCA day. Um, is device assignment? Uh, this is so the allows that allowing the use of mapping of, of hardware devices into realms. Chiefly, the demand for this is to do with the, the use of accelerators. Um, this will depend on the presence of an, of an SS, SMMU in the system, um, and there'll be some new requirement for uh, root ports to make sure that they are uh, controllable and there's a lot there's a lot going on in this with uh, various industry consortiums uh, in this space so if this work is going to be if you like sort of standards driven it's not going to be something that's going to be exclusively weird for so that devices won't have to be cca specific but they'll be you know as i say there is a lot going on in confidential compute uh which can be relevant for these devices um those will that's the so we're not fully in control of when the disclosure of those will happen but watch this space that information is coming out soon the threat model for that and and this is imbued with a lot of the, proto the protocols that are now coming out in these discussions um, is the realm must accept a device before the device can access realm memory. So there is a sort of, you know, a mapping that is established. Um, and prior to that, the, the, you know, the host won't, it won't put things on. Um, and if it's a multi-use device, then trust sticks into the whole device. I've got a five minute warning. Uh, the other area that's being worked on at the moment is multiple encryption contexts. The initial CCA design that we've talked about, um, most of the confidential stuff is provided by isolation, uh, physical or isolation. However, if you look at the threat model, 
there is the need, the use to and the use of um, um, encryption systems to back up the core isolation unit for certain threat models. So if you're worried about physical access um, to your to your device, there are things like uh, reboot attacks that can be done, which is obviously beyond the scope of, of isolation, and the use of memory encryption is was specified to do that in the in security model uh, that's a single context per world um, it's clear that still left a few um attacks open like um uh, physical another game physical actually you know dram uh, replay attacks between realms um so this is now working on a, a, a increasing number of uh, encryption contexts, um, and it just—it's a clearer story as well. If you know people, it's, it's just people aren't worried about sort of, oh, what if I was able to access between realms? It's like, okay, well, they actually now have different encryption contexts uh, for this sort of thing. So that is the other area that's been worked well, and you will see more on this as more specs are released, and that. Running up to time is all I have. Any chance? Any any last minute questions? Ooh, I have to scroll to read this one. Uh, per realm and trust zone, do they work together? Um, See, so realm could cover trust zone, enabling realms that means secure monitoring to run to the root world. Um, will it affect trust zone development? The so they are they are independent in the fact that the realms and uh, are are fully isolated from secure world the only real different the, the, the major difference is realms are a lot more flexible uh, rme enables you to move memory around so that trust zone can become more flexible but the uh, the realm programming model is is much more flexible because it works like the ends from that point of view the only thing that you're going to get from secure world that you can't get from realms is um, uh, guarantees of execution. Uh, but we anticipate um, a lot more, a lot of existing um, uh, code that's in, in secure world that um, needs to, is, is more sort of um, app oriented, not service oriented, will migrate, migrate to realms because uh, versioning them, running them up and instantiating them is a lot more flexible. Any other questions? Okay, I think maybe if there are no more questions, then uh, thank you for your patience. I hope that was useful, and um, I'll let you go on with some more sessions. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. I'm happy to have you here. Uh...